what. Oh my gosh, I will tell you what. What a woodland, what a location. I cannot wait to share this with you. And the conditions, oh, for me at least, it does not get much better than this. We're in the midst of Cumbria and it is nailing it down. Let me tell you, wonderful conditions for the woodland. Um, so in today's video, I actually wanna talk about three things, really important things I think you should learn when you first got a camera, you've bought your very first, whether it's DSLR, mirrorless, bridge camera, even a phone, whatever it is, it all applies. So I look forward to getting into that. Um, I think I've got a shot in mind already. So I'm gonna get set up, see what we can make of it. about this then I think I probably just realized this consciously do you know what I hate when I'm out with my camera I hate having my hood up because look it's like it, it's see you later peripherals gone especially in the woodland it's terrible because it like forces you to only look that way you know what I mean <laughs> like yeah it's in the woodland especially like I said you need to be like an owl you need to be looking all the way around 360 degrees so you don't miss any potential compositions on that note I want to talk, before I get into this photograph, because I think it's going to be all right, I want to talk about the first thing I think you should jump into when you purchase your first camera or, you know, if you're new into photography, and that is composition. I bang on about this so much on this YouTube channel, um, but only because I think it's so important. It probably sounds a little bit counterproductive, you know? You've just been out and spent potentially thousands on a new camera, lenses, anything, and there's me telling you, I didn't really that matter that much, you know, but I stand by that. I think composition is so important. And I don't think I jumped into composition enough when I first started. I feel like I've probably made up for it, you know, but I don't think I jumped in, into it enough. And simple fact is, like I said, I just think it's the most important part of photography. It is for me at least. So if you can start on composition as early as possible, you're going to be giving yourself a really big head start, you know. Um, here's the thing, this is a good way of putting it actually. I could be in this woodland now without my camera, without even my phone, without even my mobile phone. And I could still be working on composition because it's all about um, how and, and why, I suppose, you're taking certain photographs. How are you composing it, you know. This scene, I'll get into this in a second, but I think the shot's going to be all right. This is obviously a big vast woodland and I've picked out one very specific part of the absolute letterbox area of this woodland because that's how I've composed it and I'll tell you why in a sec but yeah have a good think about that I've actually got an ebook on that note on composition specifically in landscape photography if you'd like to check it out I'll leave a link in the video description below but yeah um, uh, this this one's interesting. I'm, I, I think it's going to come out all right. We'll see. Right, I'll put you down here somewhere. Oh my goodness, man! I don't even know if my microphone's working. I've got a feeling it's playing up, but you'll be able to know now. If you can hear me, then brilliant. If you can't, you're probably not even watching this. <laughs> right. Um, let me talk about how I have decided to compose this photograph, especially since we've just been chatting about the importance of composition. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, um, this is just the Nikon Z7 that I'm shooting with. This is the live feed of it right now. This is going to help me explain my thought process with this composition. Let me just say this now. I have no idea if this is going to work or not, this photograph. It might be horrendous, but bear with me. <laughs> um, so what really caught my eye in this woodland to start with, guys, was the bracken. We've got this beautiful, rusty, orange-coloured bracken as we come into early autumn. Oh. What a wonderful time of year. And I had to include some of that in the image. So you can see, I've got some of that in the bottom right hand corner down there. And then we've just got these two fairly thick tree trunks, you know, and these are probably the main subject of this image, if there is one, you know, or, or at the very least, a very prominent subject, these two tree trunks. And as, as I'm sure you can agree, it's quite right hand heavy between the bracken and them tree trunks. So I've tried to balance it out with all this space down here on the left hand side. We've got another nice group of dark trees. And then, I don't know if you can tell this, 
I'm, I'm hoping you, you'll be able to notice this when you see the final photograph, but around about there, you can even see it a bit, there's an opening in the woodland canopy. So there's quite a lot of light streaming down into sort of this section. And that light as well down there is actually helping to balance the image out a little bit as well. So the idea is it's quite well balanced like that, left and right. Horrendous way of showing you. <laughs> but hopefully you know what I mean at least. Um, and that's that. You know, I've thought about composition, everything's deliberate. Um, I just don't know how it's gonna turn out. You guys will see it in a second. So comment below and let me know if you think it's rubbish. Let me know if you think it's any good. Um, settings were fairly simple shot it at f14 because i want a good amount of focus throughout i want my ferns in focus in the foreground to the best that i can i want the tree trunks in focus over here obviously and i'll tell you what the background can just do whatever it wants i hope you like this shot <laughs> Let me tell you this, the rain is now coming down even heavier. It's good and it's bad, it's good oh, because it's adding a little bit of atmosphere to this wonderful woodland. And like I said before, I just like being out in it. It's bad because, let me show you this. Uh, that's my photography bag there. Uh, I've forgotten the rain cover for it. So he's just sheltered under this giant oak tree here, trying his best not to get wet. So that's my fault. Um, I found a really nice little section of woodland here that I think has got potential. I haven't figured out why yet, but I'm going to get into it in a second. But first, I want to talk about the second thing I think you should learn quickly when you've just got your first camera. And this one is about having an awareness around gear, any future purchases you might feel like you need to make. Now, I'm not here to say there's anything wrong with buying gear. You know, gear can be a wonderful thing. It can inspire you to get out more. It can enhance your, your your photo shoots you know it can make your job a lot easier as a photographer but i do feel there's always a risk especially at the start of your photography journey of going down a bit of a rabbit hole of feeling like you need to buy loads of stuff and you don't you know and, and just try and remember what made you fall in love with photography in the first place it was likely you know enjoying the process of of taking photographs being out in nature being out in a, a rainy woodland getting drenched <laughs> um composition which we've just spoken about you know like i said composition is photography for me and I, I, what did i say i said it arguably it doesn't even require gear well not arguably it doesn't require gear it requires this the old gulliver <laughs> thinking about stuff um and yeah i suppose my advice on that one would be if you are going to spend money spend it on travel new experiences new locations it's going to get you so fired up and inspired with your with your photography you know um but yeah i just thought that was an interesting one as well something something a bit different don't go down the old rabbit hole of gear too much gets you nowhere man right lovely little section of woodland like i said i want to see if i can make something of it gear's getting drenched So I've just moved on from that little area of woodland from before, you know, when I had my bag sat on the floor. I just couldn't quite make some of it, which is fine. You know, if that ever happens, I always think anyway, it's best to just move on to something else. There might be other opportunities elsewhere. And I'm glad I have. I want to show you this. I haven't figured out a shot yet, but I just sort, sort of want to show you this. I don't know really what to call it, like scene or area. Like, look at this. We've got all these lovely silver birch trunks. We've got this absolute multicolour of the woodland floor there where them ferns are changing and then yeah i don't know like got some nice um the, you know the silver birch leaves are starting to turn it's quite autumnal and i haven't figured out a photograph yet but i just feel like there's potential there somewhere you know it might mean i've got to go walk all the way around it and just have a really good look get in the middle of it you know it could be something intimate it could be something wide i haven't found out yet you know but this now or this next stage that I'm going to get stuck into I just spoke about it a second ago this is what I fell in love with in the first place this part this challenge now now it is my job well, that looks nice how do I make it into a photograph that's my job that's what I've got to do now 
Oh, but this is looking absolutely gorgeous and what a selection of colour we've got. If I can make something of this, this will definitely be um, my first autumn photograph of 2022. Uh, let's see if I can make something of it. <laughs> Right, I feel, I think, <laughs> I think, think, think I'm finally there with this composition. What I will say is, I don't think it's perfect and I think what's bugging me is that I do feel like there's, there's something better here in this little section of woodland. There's more potential. There's a better composition somewhere, but I just haven't found it yet. But this is nice, you know, or at the very least, this is a good start. This place isn't far from home for me at all, so I can return. And I also think this will be much better in a couple of weeks, you know, or in autumn when these colours come through. But the colours of the floor, man, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. There is, it's just multicoloured. That is incredible. So this bracken, once again, is playing quite a significant part in this particular composition. And then all we've got really is we've got these, I think it's these ones, these, we've got two or three silver birch trees there that are on the right hand side of my frame. And then sort of two or three more trees on the left hand side over here. We've got an oak tree off in the distance, another silver birch tree. And it all feels nicely balanced again. You know, for me, that's what a lot of woodland photography is about, really trying to achieve that balance. Uh, because obviously there's so much going on, you have to be careful with that. Another thing that's really important here is there's a tree right off in the distance. I think it's a silver birch and he's quite small. You know, the trunk's also quite thin, however, same as the first image, I think we've got an opening in the woodland canopy down there and the light is shining onto that silver birch and really illuminating him. You know, it's this wonderful glow off there in the distance. And I'm actually making him kind of like the, the, the centerpiece, if you will, of this image. I feel like everything is leading to him, to the middle of the frame. That's the idea anyway, <laughs> we'll see if it works. Um, so yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty pleasing. I've actually shot it at F16, focused on these silver birch trees that are really close to us here because we're still getting a fall off in focus as we go deeper into the image. It's because that silver birch that I mentioned off in the distance is just so far away. If I was to shoot this at F.7.1, F, focus on these silver birch in the foreground, I feel like that background blur would just be way too much for me at least. So yeah, fingers crossed, this one comes out all right. Uh, it's like, I always find it's a good and a bad thing when you're out on location taking shots um, that, that you never really know how, how good they're going to be. It's exciting. I'm always like buzzing to get home with a coffee or a beer and um, <laughs> sit down and edit the photographs and, and see if they're any good. But at the same time, you just kind of want to know, don't you? But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I enjoy that. Like I said, I think I can return back to this one. Now, um, third thing final thing when you get a camera for the first time um this one's probably quite obvious but i just want really want to stress it and it's it's that i feel you should really just get to know your camera um it's something i've been guilty of not doing enough at times and you know try and read manuals um try and understand what features your camera might have good example of where i went wrong is this nikon z7 has got that it's called focus shift shooting you know where it can do like um sort of automated focus stacking it doesn't stack the images but it'll take all the separate images at different focal points i didn't know about that for like until a, at least a year of having this camera which is madness but i think what i'm really getting at you know especially if you're a beginner of course is like start understand or start trying to learn and understand the exposure triangle if you haven't already understand um how they bounce off each other aperture shutter speed and iso and basically try and learn to use the camera that you've just purchased in manual. You'll likely be doing that anyway, but I just really wanted to stress it. Personally, I don't really see the point when people buy um, expensive, really expensive cameras and then just shoot them in automatic. Not necessarily anything wrong with it. You know, you might have really good lenses and you just want that extra quality. But I do feel like um, there's a lot of potential wasted 
in that money that you've spent, you know. Um, it's got that option, you may as well learn how to use it. Of course, it depends what type of photography you're doing and things like that. Um, but yeah, until I learn properly how to shoot manual, I don't feel like I could get as, as um, creative as I probably would have liked before when I was just shooting in automatic or when I was just using my phone, you know. Um, again, going back to point number one, it doesn't matter if you're only starting to think about composition, um, but when I was learning to use my cameras in manual mode, all I was doing was just sat at home, like in the dining room or something, and putting like different objects along the dining table, changing the aperture, seeing what it did to the depth of field, um, shutter speed, seeing how it affected uh, things that were moving in the frame, all that sort of stuff. And it's class. It was a really, I've got such fond memories of that period of when I was learning to use my camera. Um, but yeah, really try and get stuck into it. I have been in this woodland ages, like six and a half hours. It feels like I've only been here for about an hour and a half. Madness. Um, so the sun's setting in like half an hour. So I'll probably get off, get home, watch some footy, get some dindins on the go. Thank you so much for your support and for tuning in. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Not only does it really help me out and it's free, um, it just means you'll see any future videos from myself. As always, hit the thumbs up button if you've got a quick second and comment below. I love to hear from you. I love to hear your opinions. Thanks again, and I shall see you on the next adventure. Out. We got time on.